Hey there folks, I've got Robin singing in the backyard and red winged blackbirds in the marsh behind the house and the snow is finally starting to go away. So it's definitely time to start thinking about trolling for spring Chinook salmon. So today I'm gonna to go over my four favorite spring Chinook trolling rigs, starting with the least complex to the most complex. So to begin with, I'm gonna talk about plugs. This includes the Maglip 3.5 and the Maglip 4.5. The Maglev 3.5 will dive to up to 15 feet deep and about 20 feet deep on the 4.5, as well as the Brad's Magnum Wiggler, which can actually get down to almost 25 feet. Now these are extremely simple to fish. Um, all you have to do is flatline them behind the boat or kayak when you're trolling. Uh, typically 50 to 75 feet is how far I'm going to go back with these. You don't have to worry about flashers or dodgers or lead weights or anything like that. These spring chinook will often run shallow, especially in the Columbia River, or in those stagnant waters like above Bonneville Dam or on the lower Willamette, they'll suspend. Um, and so you can even catch them way up off the bottom using these plugs. And the nice thing is, is you don't have to worry about if you stop trolling or anything, they don't sink to the bottom and snag up, they'll just float back up. So it's a really good option where two pole endorsements are allowed. Now you can squeeze out a little bit more depth out of these if you run, let's say, a 20 or 30 pound braid down to say a 15 or 20 pound leader. Um, that'll help cut through the water a little bit easier because of that lower diameter of the braid and you might be able to squeeze another three to five foot of diving depth out of them. Now another trick you can do, especially this works well with the maglips, is you can actually take a little bit of shrimp or herring meat and filet and you can wrap it onto the bellies of these using that sticky thread. But you need to make sure and check that they are running correctly when you do that. So put them over the side, run them in the water, make sure that uh, they're running true and not going off to the side and flipping over. Now these can be trolled primarily upstream against current, but in those stagnant water situations, you can troll them upstream and downstream with great efficacy. Now next up is wire spinners, and I tend to favor the smaller ones, not the big uh, aggressive uh, spinners you'll see that they use at buoy 10. I tend to prefer these smaller ones. Um, I will sometimes even wrap a little bit of shrimp meat around the, the wire here with a little bit of sticky thread. Or I'll even make prawn spinners. I have a great video on how to make prawn spinners yourself at home. These are Pulse and Cascade Tackles. You can use either the small Colorado bladed style ones or the small willow leaf bladed style ones. And color's really up to you, but I do favor the chartreuse and greens as well as red and blue for my spring Chinook right here. So yeah, keep them small. You can run them by themselves. You do need to use some uh, lead to get down there uh, to the depths that these fish are running, but you can just run a straight spinner down there. You can put a little shrimp meat on it, like I said, to give it some scent, or you can just rub some scent on there, um, the sticky scent, and just troll them as they are. Now to really take advantage of these spinners, um, it's really good to incorporate some kind of flasher in front of them. This can include the triangle rotating style flashers like the big owls like I have here. Run these three to five feet in front of your spinners uh, just to give it a little bit of action. If you're running a prawn spinner, I definitely recommend the triangle flashers over some of the more aggressive flashers I'm gonna talk about in a little bit just because those more aggressive flashers will put more strain on the shrimp and tend to rip it off. This is especially true when I get to other bait later down the line here. Uh, but these big owls, they spin really nicely. They don't put out a lot of drag. So if you're a kayak angler or something like that and you're fishing in heavier current, these might be a good option for you. And of course, all the rage lately has been these rotating 360 degree flashers. Uh, you run a spinner behind these things, it's just absolutely deadly, either on the downstream troll and current or when you're targeting suspended fish in those slack water fisheries like on the Willamette or above Bonneville Dam. And if you're not sure what conditions you're gonna encounter that day and what you're gonna be fishing in terms of lures or bait, then look at these Leo flashers, which can be run in two different ways. They can be run down the middle, just like the big owls, and they'll just rotate just like this, or you can offset it here and that'll create that big rotation just like the pro trolls do. So it really is a flexible uh, flasher option for you and they are absolutely deadly, just as deadly as the pro trolls and their offset or the big owls if they're run down the middle. Okay, next up are gonna be those baits that you pack with scent or tuna or some kind of bait and they're encased in plastic. So this includes the Brad's Killer Fishing Gear mini cut plugs and kokanee cut plugs. That's the two sizes I really like for springers. 
Um, I tend to really favor the minis over all of them just because uh, they've just been very productive for me. Like I do better for spring chinook on these smaller lures than I do with oversized lures. Um, so for instance, they just have a herring pattern one or the seahawk pattern one has produced many springers for me. But you can also downsize to their kokanee cut plug sizes. You'd be surprised at how big a salmon will hit these smaller targets. And some of them I've even put tape on to sort of match those colors that I really like for springers, which is the chartreuse, green, blue, red. Uh, but don't overlook the new uh, Yakima bait spinfish that comes in a three inch and four inch model. Um, I have a video comparing these two. Uh, they're very, very simple to rig. Uh, there's so many different ways to rig uh, super baits that I won't get into it. Um, but this one's very simple to rig. You just run a couple beads and hooks off the tail and they spin really nicely and the tuna tends to stay in there a little bit better. Uh, there's a whole bunch of colors out there which are great for spring Chinook. Again, you can run these just naked by themselves, but I think they're going to be far better behind a Dodger flasher. And I do tend to prefer running those behind those strong rotating flashers that really put out a lot of action. You don't have to worry about the, the bait bleeding out of these things. So just go ahead and run those Pro Trolls or Leo flashers in that offset position. And then lastly, I have to talk about herring. I mean, herring have been a go-to for Spring Chinook anglers on the Columbia River for a long time, and they still produce fish consistently. That being said, they are a little bit more work than a lot of the lures that I just covered. Now, the first thing you need to do is when you're buying your trays of herring, you need to make sure that they are good looking herring. Um, I typically run green label herring, so that's this size of herring here. I want to make sure that they haven't thawed and refroze because you're going to get a really bloody herring. You'll see a lot of blood around the eyes and gills if they've thawed and then been re refrozen. Um, and also that means the scales will come off and they won't be as bright and shiny as attractive to the schnook when you're uh, trolling them and they're more likely to come off the hook too. So make sure you look at your, your packages carefully. Now I do highly recommend brining your herring. So there's a whole bunch of different brines out there and a whole bunch of different colors. I like blues, chartreuses, and greens for these spring Chinook. You just put them in there, soak them in there. It brightens them up a lot. It tightens up the scales on them. Um, so they're less likely to come off. It gives you a shinier uh, reflection off of your bait. And then um, it also keeps those scales on there a little bit better and it makes it harder for a fish to strip it off. Um, these herring will soften up the more you troll them and eventually they're just going to come off the hook um, as they get torn out or if they get struck by a fish and they don't hook up. There's a couple different ways to rig these. You can cut plug them, uh, which is where you cut backward at about a 20 to 30 degree angle and then you angle your knife at a 20 to 30 degree angle depending on how the rotation that you want to have on your herring. Or you can buy herring helmets that just clip on the front of it and uh, pretty much guarantee that you're going to get a good spin. There are a lot more work. You need to change out your baits frequently. Um, check your baits, especially after any strikes, because they're probably likely going to tear it away. Uh, which is why I don't tend to run herring as much anymore. I tend to run the, the spinners or I tend to run the super baits and spin fish because if a fish strikes it, I can just leave it down there and a lot of times that fish will follow and come back and hit it again. With a herring, they may strike it, strip their bait off, and then you're done. Um, so I, I'm not a big fan of herring, but they definitely work. They produce lots of fish. They're especially productive in early season cold water. It seems like her the herring bite is usually a little bit stronger than it is on the spinner or um, spin fish or super bait bite. So early season, if you're one of those guys who just has to get out and chase uh, spring chinook early, then herring's probably a great way to go. Now you can run herring naked without a flasher in front of it and run it tight to the bottom and be very, very productive. But if you do want to add that extra flash, say there's a little bit of off color water, especially if you're fishing early season, we've got a lot of melt going on. Now, as far as flashers go, in terms of what I'm going to run with herring, I'm not going to run these big, strong rotating 360 flashers like the Pro Trolls, because it will just all that movement and pressure will just rip your bait up. So I tend to run the triangle flashers. They put out a little less drag. Uh, they're less likely to damage your baits from the action. Um, run these anywhere from four to six feet in front of your herring. Um, uh, and you can use a dropper rig off the front uh, with lead to get down to where you need to. 
All right, I'll put links to some of my favorite lures and rigs below, as well as links to some of the videos I show how to rig up prawn spinners, as well as comparing uh, super baits to the spin fish. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you out on the river chasing spring chinook. And just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye guys.